Day Treat with NAZ Elite, a monthly podcast in which I chat with POCA NAZ Elite team members, and you'll get a behind-the-scenes scoop on their training, racing, and everyday lives. I'm your host, Eric Sensman. You can find our monthly podcast on SoundCloud uh, by searching POCA NAZ Elite, and you can learn more about the faces behind the team uh, by visiting their website, nazelite.com their Facebook page, Northern Arizona Elite, or their Instagram and Twitter, both at NAZ underscore Elite. In this episode of the podcast, I sat down with Matt Yano, and we had a very fun chat about uh, all things marathon related, uh, specifically his um, history with the marathon. So um, he's not running a marathon this spring, and we discuss why he's chosen to do that. Uh, instead, he's focusing on some shorter races. Um, we look ahead to the 2020 Olympic Trials in Atlanta and his, uh, his hopes for that race. And uh, Matt walks us through sort of his career over the last couple of years, some of the injuries he's dealt with, um, allergies, a variety of things that have uh, given him some speed bumps. but. Seems like he's making progress now, and uh, he discusses where that's going to lead him going forward. So, uh, for all things marathon related with Matt Yano, sit back and enjoy. All right, I'm here with Matt Yano of NAZ Elite. Matt, welcome to the podcast. Thanks. Slash uh, video podcast. We have to come up with a name for it. We do. That's right. We discuss this. Um, so look for that. Video cast. The, the video, video cast. cast. I like that. Uh, so here on the video cast mm-hmm. slash podcast. Um, well, to start, congrats on the uh, sixth place finish. Uh, I guess it was just this past weekend. Yeah, just a couple days ago. Yeah, Sunday. a couple days mm-hmm. ago. Um, and that was in Pittsburgh. Yep. First time in Pittsburgh. Um yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it was it was uh, Pittsburgh half marathon, USA half marathon championships, yep. and sixth was a good uh, progress point for me. So not where I wanted to be, but um, a step forward after a challenging spring. So I'll I'll take it and sure. just take it for what it was, and and just try to build from there. Yeah, and we'll get into some of those um, maybe speed bumps or things that have not gone quite so well this spring. Um, but before we do that. I guess we'll take a step back. Mm-hmm. Uh, you f- ran your first marathon, was it in 2015? 14. 14, Chicago. thank you. In Chicago, mm-hmm. that's right. Okay. And how old were you at the time? I was actually, actually, that's kind of an interesting story. Okay, good. I was on the day of the Chicago marathon, my first marathon, I was exactly 26.2 years old to the day. Whoa. To the day. That's so rad. Yeah, it was kind of a crazy realization. When, and I don't remember how I came to it, but I was like, Oh, I'm going to be 26 when I run my first marathon. That's kind of cool. I was like, oh, I wonder, it'd be like a couple months after I turned 26. I wonder how close it might be. So I did the math. I counted the number of days after my birthday, which is August right. 1st. Uh-huh. And it just happened to be exactly 26.2 years old. It's so nuts. So I was hoping it was going to be really fortuitous. And sure. it was going to be like this really uh, amazing, you know, debut. Right. And it wasn't, but, um, but it was, it was good for a long time and it still kind of makes for a good story. So, totally. Totally. Yeah. That's a great story. Exactly. 26.2. Mm-hmm. Um, I love that you did the calculations. I did. Yeah. I forget. I, now I forget what the number of days was, but, um, I think the race was October 12th that year. So, and my birthday is August 1st. So it was like a little over two months yeah uh, it was like 70 i don't know 70 something days yeah so it, it, right. whatever whatever the math is some math people can figure it out but, x divided by 365 but you can go back and count it and i assure you it's 26.2 yeah, yeah. that's so cool yeah that's super awesome yeah and why um okay so yeah at that time you were 26 why at the time did you decide on chicago you know we i had run uh prior uh, that that prior January, I had run really well in the half marathon. Mm-hmm. I ran still my personal best, sixty one forty seven, in Houston that year. And we, my coach and I, Ben, just had really ambitious goals. Um, I wanted to go somewhere that I could run. I wanted to run somewhere domestically that I could run or try to run really fast and have yeah. a really fast debut. Um, and we felt that running a sixty one minute half earlier in the year kind of set 
me up well for that. Sure. Um, and that year I also ran the world championships for the half marathon. So it was just, it was a good year. I had a lot of things going for me. There was like this snowball was building. And, um, so we, we settled on Chicago as somewhere that's historically fast, right. generally has a really good field at the time. They still had they still, rabbits, yep. um, or pacers. So, uh, we thought that it was somewhere that I could have a really good shot at running 210 or faster. Yep. Um, my, at the time, my words got a little bit misconstrued and everyone was like, oh, he's going for Ryan Hall's debut American record, which was not the case. That was not what I was going for. I was trying to run 210. Okay. Um, and what I said was if I had a really phenomenal, amazing day and I was on pace for sub 210, that I would maybe start to let that creep into my mind. Sure. Um, but my goal by no means was to run 208 right. 24 oh, God. or faster. So fast. Um, but another interesting story that summer, real quick, just in a side tangent, that summer we went for a short training camp in, in Las Vegas, just a couple of days to kind of get the team to reset and sure. just get everyone bonding together for a few days. And one of our last dinners in Las Vegas, um, we we had a combined bill and I picked up the bill and it was $208.24. So at that time too, I was what? like, there's all these signs, yes. all these things are coming. And I, I think I took a picture of it. I don't know if I could still find it on my phone, uh -huh. but um, I might have tweeted it at the time. I don't remember. But uh, so maybe that's why people thought I was going for it. Yeah, that could be, that could be. But uh, yeah, it was just another one of those crazy coincidences that I was Whoa. like, maybe, maybe the universe is setting me up to right. run this fast. Right. Um, and then in the race, uh, I was on pace for 210 for... 20 21 miles something like that um and then the wheels kind of fell off and i made some rookie mistakes and sure in the first marathon i didn't take any of my fluids because it was like the perfect chicago day yeah you know, it's like 50 degrees right light breeze got a rarity sunny. at that race really it's, but, it was rare yeah. but it was perfect conditions yeah absolutely yeah. perfect and so i just got to the first water station and i was like i'm not thirsty i don't i don't want to waste time like taking that right and then second water station, same thing. And I can, it and continued. And then like through, I had to have been at least 25 K maybe 30 K was when I realized it. And I was like, Ooh, this is catching up. I don't need to just take fluid for the hydration. Yeah. I also need fluid for calories. Right. And that's when it kind of hit me. And that's when it started to get really hard sure. as the marathon does. Sure. And, um, by then it was too late though. Right. You know, my body right. was already on the decline and I, there wasn't really enough time to get it back. Right. So, yeah. um, lesson learned though. Sure. Um, haven't made that mistake since my fueling has been on point ever yep. since then. <laughs> so if there's anything, you know, that had to come of that, um, I learned a good lesson. Yeah. I feel like that's a tough one to learn, um, without experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, you're told the importance of nutrition for, for a race of that distance, but yeah, until you, um, until you feel the effects of not doing that. <laughs> yeah. It well, can be tough. To... Yeah. And it's one of those things. I think a lot of people overlook it. I think sure. a lot of people don't think, you know, they do all the training, they do all the tempo runs, the, the long runs, all this other training related stuff that goes into marathons and they overlook something as important as nutrition. And right. it was, I, I forget exactly when it was in that buildup. I think it was about five weeks to go. And I stayed in Flagstaff that whole buildup until two days before Chicago, but I think it was about five weeks to go. I went to, went to get sushi with Shalane Flanagan mm -hmm. and we were just talking about <clears throat> the race and strategy. And she asked me what I was going to use for my fueling. I was like, oh, I don't, I haven't really thought about it yet. And I, she almost flipped the table. <laughs> She's, and it was from there, for, you know, then for the next four weeks, I was scrambling because I had to figure out, right. was I going to use goo or power bar or sure. some other, you know, some kind of powder mix or something yeah, else. Yeah. And um, so it was kind of a struggle, but then I didn't really have that many big workouts left at the time. Sure. So uh, she instilled a little bit of fear in me at the time because <laughs> I was like, I, this is just something we hadn't thought of either. Sure. Ben hadn't thought of it. I yeah. hadn't thought yeah. of it. Um, I think we just undervalued how important it was. Right. Um, and again, like I said, we haven't made that mistake since sure. every, every marathon since then for, for all of the athletes on the team, it's like one of the first things we figure out yeah. very early in the buildup. Right. Um, what are you going to use on race day? Let's start practicing with that. Yeah. Um, and so that's, that's a lesson that we learned. And that's something that we've tried to pass on to other people, but you still see 
in every marathon you see people making that same mistake. Of course, yeah. So. Yeah, and conditions can play a role. Like you said, if they're really nice and you just don't think about it, mm -hmm. or if conditions are really tough, it can be hard to force yourself to put something down. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you do have like quite a history with the marathon since that first Chicago. Mm -hmm. um, I believe every year since you've run at least one, mm -hmm. 15, 16, 17. Yep. Um, so I want to just kind of walk through that a little bit mm -hmm. uh, because that's, well, so far you haven't run a marathon this year. So we'll, we'll get to whether or not you will or what that'll look like. But um, previously that's, that's yeah, something you focused on. So it was um, LA in... 2015? Yep. So, okay. so Chicago was the first one, 2014, and then LA and Berlin in yep. 2015, and then the trials and New York in 2016, and then Frankfurt in 2017. Right. Okay. Yep. And then Berlin is the, the PR 212.28. Correct. And that's still the case. Frankfurt, you were quite close this year. I was close. Uh, I was 213.40. Okay. One or 42, I yeah. think. Yeah. yeah. So about a little over a minute off. Yeah. And that, that territory... Like that, that range in the marathon is like, I guess just a really tough one. Like you're yeah. so close to being at a level that is, is rarefied air. Um, so what, what's that been like to, you know, over the years be in that 212 to 213 range? Is it frustrating or is it, oh, this is good and I'm going to, the next step will come or what? Yeah. What is that I mean, like? I, I think, so the progression of my marathons in, in, Chicago I ran two ended up 217 after falling apart the last 10k and then um LA the next year super hot race I ran 216 so still mm -hmm. progress it was probably worth a lot faster than that sure it's like 80 something degrees yeah yeah um and then Berlin was the next one where I ran 212 so from there that was a huge jump because it was like a four minute improvement at the time um <clears throat> and then the trials you don't run for time and then sure. New York you don't run for time and that's where I tore my labrum anyway and so um, I haven't, it's been kind of a while since I've gone for something really fast. Um, and then in Frankfurt, I was coming off of hip surgery less than a year prior. So I, it was kind of bittersweet. I was, I was really, um, encouraged by running 213 after the hip surgery, but I was also frustrated because, um, I don't want to be a 212 or 213 marathon, right. you know, I want to be in the two O's, uh, high two O's sub 210 and so um it and it is kind of this middle ground where you're not quite top tier um but you're also you're also like pretty up there so uh in the u.s there aren't that many people that are running in that realm yeah right right now so um it's kind of like i just want to make that jump and i just want to yeah. be at that next level uh instead of being kind of stuck in this like middle kind of purgatory sure. between you know, where a lot of the pack is and where the rest of, you know, the guys that I want to be running with right, are. Right. Um, but I'm confident that I'm making progress. I'm working on weaknesses, um, trying to get my speed back to, to make those faster paces feel more comfortable for the marathon. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of, in a nutshell, that's kind of like the approach that we're taking moving forward and, and moving towards the trials in 2020. Yeah. Yeah. And I want to unpack that a little bit, the, mm -hmm. the nutshell, uh, <clears throat> that you just mentioned. Um, before we get quite there, you were um, in 2016. You were uh, were you sixth at the mm -hmm. at the trials? Yeah, sixth at the trials. So speaking yeah. of sixth place, I guess yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's how we started. Yeah, um, it's a number that I, I don't. I want to get away from the sixes. <laughs> yeah, I don't right. want to be in the sixes. Yeah, <laughs> top three sounds so much better. Yes. Yeah, I'll like, take third. Yeah, right, right. That's all I you don't that's have all to I'm win for. <laughs> yeah. I'll be happy with that. And in in that case. Um, did you progress of course is not linear like sure. it's not like you're always there's you know a couple steps forward one step back as they say but um at that point in 2016 was that a result that you felt was representative of how you felt at the time or like your abilities do you think that um on the perfect day you know Matt Yano is is capable of top three at the at the trials yeah I felt uh Ben and I both felt that I could have made that team. Mm -hmm. And so, um, it was, it was another one of those bittersweet moments because it was from the injuries that I've kind of alluded to started in, uh, July of 2015. And so it was before I ran most of the Berlin buildup with this, these pelvic injuries. Yeah. Um, and then, 
you know, we, I took a, sh a short break after Berlin and I was trying to address these things and, mm -hmm. um, time was just running out cause we had to, we had to get going for the trials sure. cause trials don't move. Yeah. And so, um, we, we were really conservative for about a month after Berlin and I was really aggressive with, sorry, conservative with training, mm -hmm. aggressive with physical therapy and, um, seeing my physio down in Phoenix, John Ball, um, a lot. And we just weren't really getting very many results from right. it and so we hit like middle of november and it was like all right we have no choice we have to go full throttle towards the trials and give it our best shot right and so um that training segment while it was solid uh wasn't wasn't my best training segment sure. um you know and, and everybody deal, deals with injuries i'm cer i'm certainly not suggesting i'm the only one who had, <laughs> right, who right. had challenges sure um but yeah, it just, it, it wasn't ideal. And I felt that if I, if I was in, you know, closer to hundred percent health, um, I do feel like I, and I still feel like I could have made the team. Um, but you can't go back and change the past. Of so course. all I can do is use that as motivation to try to, to try to build in the future and try to, um, get myself on the team in 2020. Sure. And a little bit more with respect to that injury, did you, uh, did you and Ben or you or Ben feel that, looking back, well, maybe you learned something, but did you think that maybe it would have been smarter to take Berlin off the table and just work towards the trials or? You know, I, I don't think that we, we didn't realize the scope of how bad the injury was okay. at the, at the time. time. I, right. It was kind of just like, oh, I have some soreness here and it's it always gets sore after workouts and, um, and we tried to just manage it the best that we could, yeah. uh, in hindsight, had we known it was b as bad as it was, yes, right. I would, I, I would absolutely have taken Berlin off the table and just tried to, to give a better go at the trials. Um, but I do think that I, I don't know, it's kind of a catch 22 because I do think that having run Berlin and having been in that realm of, of being on 210 pace for 24 miles there, uh, or 23 and a half or whatever it was like, I do think that I'm a better athlete because of that. Sure. So it's, it's kind of this catch 22 where it's of like, course. I, I do think I came off of that race a little bit worse, um, physically, but as an athlete and, and in the progression of what I'm trying to do in the sport, I, I think it was a big developmental stage for me. Sure. So it's a tough question to answer. Yeah, absolutely. Kind of go both ways. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I, and I'm here to ask the tough questions. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> um, well, yeah, I think that's, uh, it's always difficult to look back because at the time you just don't have the same information sure. as, as when you're in the future. But, um, yeah, so we're slowly moving towards, towards now. Uh, but yeah, so after the trials, you didn't again return to the marathon for about a year and a half, right? Until Frankfurt that um, next fall? No. So after the trials, I, I ended up actually having to take four months off because right. of the injury. Yeah. Um, and then I had surgery in April of that year. So the trials were February. Yep mid-February, I forget the exact date now, but uh, February 13th. Um, and then I I had surgery in April on my pelvis um, on both sides. And so took four months off, started training again, was feeling really good. And so we kind of pressed the envelope a little bit. We picked New York for, That's right. for that yeah. fall, fall of 2016. Um, by far my best training segment ever. Really? Um, yeah, despite four months off, uh, do, do, was that time for some, it can be difficult mentally for some people. Do, mm -hmm. do, was that, were you able to kind of rest and relax and rejuvenate? Was that like a, I think uh, looking back on it now, I think that that's what was happening. I yeah. think, I think I really allowed my body to rest, which I don't do. Typically, right. <laughs> I don't like rest. Yeah, I don't yeah. like time off. Um, I don't like days off sure. in a training segment. Um, I do realize their value mm -hmm, from, mm -hmm. from time to time. Um, but just typically when I do them, when Ben incorporates them into a training segment, I generally come off of them feeling worse. Uh, and then it's almost like I have to run for a few days to kind of get my legs back, sure. back into the groove. Yeah. Um, so all of that to say, I don't like time off, but I do think that that contributed to that training segment being my best one ever. Yeah. Um, and then unfortunately in that segment, uh, I partially, well, I had, um, in April when I had the hip surgery or the pelvic surgery, 
I learned after the fact that I also had a partially torn labrum, which I didn't know at the time, but that's not that big of a deal. A lot of people have partially torn labrums. You can train through it. Uh -huh. um, a lot of people do. Uh, but I, in that New York segment, we, we pushed the envelope on mileage. We, we did more volume in the workouts than we'd ever done before. And I think it was just really putting a lot of stress on my labrum. Sure. And then in New York City, I, during the race, I felt it. I felt when it tore uh -huh. and I was like, oh, I don't know what that was, but it didn't feel good. Right. And so I foolishly finished the race and went in for a consult after that and had to have surgery again. Oh, goodness. So it was another another five months off after that one. Yeah. So it, then it wasn't until the this past fall. That Correct. Yeah, so then, yeah. yeah. So from November 5th or 6th, whatever day the marathon was that year, uh, I didn't run again until the following yep. like April or May. Right. right. Um, and then it was a long, gradual build towards Frankfurt. Okay. Just, yeah. Just Where you took to, your time a little more. We took the took our time, and um, fortunately, like we had Hook on board with with the whole plan. Sure. And, um, they didn't jump ship, which was awesome because sure. they easily could have said this guy has gotten injured a couple times, yeah. like, yeah. and they didn't. So. Um, I'm grateful for that, and I'm grateful that they allowed me to really just build back into it and try to let the fitness come to me rather yeah. than be chasing try it so much. It, yeah. um, and so it did. I ran a few half marathons that were very unspectacular, but <laughs> um, they were good steps. Again, sure. I'm, I'm big on progress, and yeah. they, they were good steps in the right direction. Right. Um, and then Frankfurt, I think, given what I had been through the prior two years, was a solid result. Yeah. So, um, again another stepping stone on the way to being back to where I want to be right. come 2020. Yeah. Yeah. So that's certainly the goal um, from, yeah, you've alluded to it a couple of times. I've talked to Ben and it sounds like that's uh, what's on the horizon. Um, sure. yeah. So yeah, we'll talk about uh, that buildup, which I guess in some respects starts, it has started. Um, yeah. It's funny. A lot of people think about these marathon segments as being very compartmentalized. Yes. And, oh, this buildup starts here, but and we say that too. But okay, but in reality, it's started years ago. <laughs> right. it's, it's, it's a culmination of yes. thing of, of many years and right. uh, yeah, a lot of a lot more time, as you know, and mileage and sure, uh, all that stuff goes into the marathon than just any one twelve or fifteen or twenty week segment immediately prior yeah. to it yeah. yeah yeah so i know um so this spring i guess we can we can kind of get to the present uh you you ran the the baa 5k mm -hmm. i believe um i think you ran a 5k on the track indoors mm -hmm. um you've run a 10 mile yep. in sacramento mm -hmm. you had the half marathon in pittsburgh i may be leaving out a race or two uh u.s cross country oh you were in u.s yep. cross okay. new york city half new york city half um, you've been busy <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I have six more races planned before uh, the end of August. Before the end of August, yeah. wow. Okay, so yeah, so talk to me about well, why? Yeah, <laughs> what, what, so yeah, yeah so uh, Ben and I sat down after Frankfurt in um, in the fall, back in November, and um, I kind of had this idea that I had been thinking on for a while, and we had kind of tossed it around a little bit here and there, but had never really fully fleshed it out. Um, and that was to take a break from the marathon um, because I had basically run fall, spring, fall, spring, fall, you know, pretty consistently since I started doing marathons and um, with a couple surgeries mixed in there in, case, right. in, in place of some spring marathons. Uh -huh. But um, we had we had stuck so um, religiously to the marathon that I felt like. I felt like my body was kind of getting stale. I felt like I was mm. getting slower. Mm. Um, and so the idea of this of this whole winter and spring initially was to get back on the track, run a few 5Ks, run a few 10Ks, try and smash some old PRs. Last yeah. time I've been on, the last time I raced on the track was 2011. Oh God. So. Oh, that had to hurt. A long, it was a long <laughs> time. Um, yeah, and so the first one was that indoor 5K. Yeah. Um, that Which, was at uh, UW, was it? At UW, yeah. yep. <clears throat> and it went okay. Um, but again, this is, I kind of alluded to this before, but I had some less than ideal things this spring going sure. on. And, and they kind of started in the month of January, like leading into that 5K. Okay. So yeah. we knew it wasn't going to be ideal, but we thought that I could still get some benefit from it. Sure. So that was why we just forged ahead. and. Yeah. We're like, let's just go and see what happens. And I snagged a little baby PR there, dipped under 14, just a little bit. 
um, which was kind of nice because I'd never done that yeah, before. Yeah, definitely. Um, progress again. Pro again, yeah. progress. Yeah. And so um, from there, we had all these other races planned, but the closer I was going to run Stanford 10K. Okay. <clears throat> but the closer we got, um, I just was having a lot of issues with allergies and asthma and I got sick like three or four times in January and February and so obviously not ideal training yeah, conditions. Not at all. <laughs> and so I decided to scrap Stanford and we we scrambled to try to get a different plan together. Um and that's where all these other road races have come into play. Uh, okay. And so um I was gonna be on the track I was hoping to be on the track a lot more just to right try to really get the turnover back and um kind of be exposed a little bit on the track and get yeah, back and spikes nowhere to hide and get there, up right? on my toes yeah. and just really have fun with it. Because this was kind of the first year that, since 2011, that I was really excited about sure. the concept of running track again. Okay. Uh -huh. um, and I feel like my my PRs on the track are kind of soft. So um, it was a fun kind of new challenge for me to, to wrap my mind around getting back there. Right. And doing that kind of stuff again. Um, but, you know, we had to be adaptable to the current state of how things were going and so changed the plan a little bit um had a few rough races with the asthma stuff and so um i feel like i'm i'm trending upwards i'm kind of coming out of it a little bit but uh spring in flagstaff is just brutal for yeah. for people with allergies and asthma and so um it's just we're just trying to manage that sure and get through that and then try to have a good summer of racing and lead into uh, a marathon in the fall, hopefully. Yeah, and I know, um, well, I'll be interested to hear about the fall then, but uh, I mean, allergies are very common for a lot of mm -hmm. people. I wonder if, uh, well, yeah, just for anyone listening and or watching, um, do you find anything works especially well for you with with dealing with those oh, allergies? Man. It's been a process. Um, I've been working with an allergist okay. at uh, Flagstaff Medical Center. Um, and it's been kind of a little bit of trial and error because some stuff works for some people. It doesn't work for others. Um, but I'm on a couple different allergy medicines. I'm on a handful of nasal sprays, some inhalers, some, uh, allergy drops, which is like a, a oh, okay. relatively new, like sublingual that's uh -huh. supposed to help in the longer term. Oh, so, um, <clears throat> that might, maybe make a difference for next year not so much for this year but still good to be doing it now yeah yeah um you know and then and then there's all kinds of other like i don't know if you would call them like homeo not homeopathic but like home remedies sure. kind of so epsom salt baths where i'm submerging my lungs and like a lot of stretching and okay um, i get a lot of art and massage work on my chest and uh -huh, back and uh -huh. just just anything i can think of to try to open up all of my i see breathing muscles which are a lot more than just your lungs right um, right everything surrounding your lungs sure. your, under your arms and your neck yeah. just all kinds of stuff that's been really uncomfortable but um i think on the whole it is helping and it's it's stuff that I'm happy to figure out now versus waiting until it becomes an issue again sure. next year or in 2020. Yeah. Um, yeah. So hopefully we can we can kind of nail down the routine now, right. figure it out now, and then um, be that much better prepared going into next year yeah. and the following years yeah. when this inevitably pops up again. <laughs> right. Yeah. Throw the kitchen sink at it. That's what I'm trying. What I took away. That's yeah, what yeah, I'm yeah, trying. Yeah. Supplements, That's... like vitamin C, vitamin D. I mean, I'm just doing everything to try to, yeah. to try to get my, get my body functioning as close to optimum as I can and right. hope that that, um, helps with the asthma and the breathing stuff. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Um, before we move to the fall, I have to ask the, uh, so you were largely training for the marathon for a number of years. You mm -hmm. had some injuries. Then you decide we got to get the speed back. So you start going back to the track, doing these shorter races. Um, and as was mentioned, you ran the, the Boston, um, athletic association 5k. Mm -hmm. What, how does that feel to line up at a race like that with that sort of field, that sort of competition, having been away from that, that distance, uh, for so long, you know, I, I kind of initially when we, when we first put on the schedule, I was kind of apprehensive about sure. it. So I'm like, this is really short. <laughs> this is really far out of my comfort zone. Um, but then the closer we got, I, I was able to kind of change my mentality about it a mm -hmm, little bit mm -hmm. and I just had fun with it, honestly. And, and that maybe sounds kind of cheesy, but it was true. Cause I, I kind of went into it without 
pressure without expectation yeah because nobody i don't think anybody expects me to like blow the field away in 5k <laughs> right. um very much a marathoner now so uh you know it was it was fun it was like i mean i knew i was lining up against one of my own teammates scott Fowle, uh -huh. who's run super fast and was fourth at the trials in 2016 um on in, the track in the 5k yeah uh in the 10k in the 10k that's yeah, right that's right it's a 10k but but um, shorter distance but yeah something it. shorter yeah. and so and he's definitely got faster wheels than i do um <clears throat> so not only to be lining up against him but ben true and um just just the whole field was a really it was stacked yeah, yeah it was I mean, it was a, a classy field and so um I just kind of went into it without that much pressure on my back. Yeah. And so it was kind of fun. And the first mile was, I don't know, right around 4.30, maybe just a tick under. Yeah. And I felt really uncomfortable um, pretty much right from the gun. Sure. But uh, the second mile was about the same. It didn't really feel that much worse. Sure. And then that's when the field took off. And then the marathoner was <laughs> running 4.30 again. <laughs> yeah. So it was like I was pretty consistent right uh from the first to the second to the third mile um i got up on my toes in the last you know couple hundred meters, meters and yeah. almost out kicked a couple guys uh -huh. that are much faster than me uh, yeah. so that was kind of fun sure. but um yeah i just had fun with it and that was kind of part of the reason too that we wanted to do all these shorter races this spring yeah um just the marathon i love it i i love the training i love the race but it can really grind on you yeah um, right and so that was part of the idea of bringing in all this shorter stuff like get get back to why i started running and right. just have fun with it and like rediscover <clears throat> the the passion that i had all through college and that i still have but it just it 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 uh evolves i think as as we yeah grow older and as it becomes our job and as it you know it, it infiltrates all these different areas of our lives whereas you know, when you're younger, it's like this outlet that you have sure. um, from school or from work or from what other whatever other stresses you might have. And now it's kind of all consuming, which can be a very good thing. Yeah. Um, but if things maybe aren't going so well and in those two years where I was dealing with injuries, right. I would say things weren't going so well. And so it wasn't all that enjoyable for me. And so um, now I'm kind of getting back to having my body feel really good. And I'm working really hard at that because it's still things pop up and I'm able to manage them better because sure. I'm more in tuned with uh, with my body now just from getting so much work done over the right. last couple of years. Um, and I'm finding the passion again, which I think is huge. And I think if, yeah. if you're not if you're not enjoying what you're doing every day and pouring your heart into it, then I don't think that you're going to achieve what you want to achieve. So, um, yeah, that's been a big push for us to try to get to that get back to that point again. Yeah. Um, yeah. That makes plenty of sense. Yeah. And I certainly think that I'm on track to doing that. So good. Yeah. I've had some fun with some of these races and now that they're kind of trending upwards again, um, it's always, I, it's always more fun when you're, when you're doing, <laughs> doing well. Yeah. Definitely. So, um, yeah, it's been, it's been a challenge, but it's been fun, Yeah, which is a really good thing. And do you think, uh, just for your everyday marathoner, um, would you, would you advise a, a similar, you know, if someone wants to improve their PR, mm -hmm. you know, from three and a half hours to three twenty or whatever it might yeah. be, um, yeah. Do you think uh, you that's that's a recommendation you would make to to those folks? Like, yeah. yeah, hop down and get a little uncomfortable, have some fun. Yeah, I mean, I think I think everybody's a little bit different, but um, if you really kind of analyze some of the top marathoners of the last couple of years, um, at least in the U.S., we've seen Shalane Flanagan do it. She um, kind of was forced into it when she injured her back mm -hmm. um, in the build-up to Boston last year. She had to drop out of Boston, and then she went back to the track and ran 5Ks and 10Ks, and she went back to that really short stuff, and then she won New York. Yep. Um, we saw Desi do it as well. She took the fall away from the marathon, didn't run um, a fall marathon in 2017, and wanted to work on her speed and you might not have seen her in that many results but she was there mm -hmm. um just <laughs> she was kind of doing a really similar thing she was yeah. challenging her comfort zone and sure. running these short cross-country races and um and i i believe that she i forget if it was in runner's world or i forget where i saw it but there was an article somewhere where she talked about this a similar thing to what i was just talking about yeah. discovering the passion for mm -hmm. it and mm -hmm. Um, she almost quit running. <laughs> wow. Um, last That's fall. hard to imagine. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, then she comes back and wins Boston. Right. And so, um, 
I think there's certainly something to be said for, especially when you've been doing the marathon for so long right. and it's, and it's become so ingrained in who you are as a person and as an athlete and it's what you're known for. Sure. Sure. Um, I think to break out of that, get out of your comfort zone, work on the leg speed, um, wake your body up a little bit yeah. um, and then transition back to the marathon when you feel that it's like really calling you again, um, I think could lead to some really big things. So that's kind of the approach that we're taking. Sure. And I certainly would say um, for the average person, if they're, if they're kind of in this, like, um, I don't know, this rut of, of marathoning that, um, just take a step away from it, run some five K's, run some 10 K's, um, some half marathons, just yep. do some stuff that, uh, may not, you may not think directly correlates to the marathon, but it does. Yeah. I mean, it's running economy, running efficiency that all translates over to the marathon right. Right, once you move back up. So, um, that's kind of the approach that we've had. And I'm, f I can feel the difference. I can feel my form changing. Like that's great. From, from when I ran Frankfurt to, when I ran a workout this morning, sure. I, I can feel the difference. Yeah, um, yeah. And my coach has said the same thing. He can see the difference. Um, so that's kind of exciting. That is to, exciting. Again, to see progress. And yeah. it's like day to day, you may not notice it, but here I am six months after we've kind of started this, this different, uh, shorter s segment of shorter races and workouts. Um, and I'm starting to feel those things accumulate and start to pay off. So now I'm getting even more excited to transition back to the marathon because right. I think that these short, fast races and workouts that we've been doing are going to translate really well. Yeah. So can you yet say where we'll see uh, this payoff this um, fall? I don't, it'll probably be somewhere domestic. Okay. Uh, I haven't, I haven't for sure decided yet. I, I, I have a pretty good idea in mind, but okay. I'm going to hold off quite, quite That yet. seems and very fair. Yeah. <laughs> I have um, a few teammates that, are going to be likely running marathons as uh -huh, well as well. Uh -huh. So, um, and they haven't really figured out what theirs are going to be. So, um, ideally if I could, I would try to line up with some of them. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of this process where I think it was before, before the fall of 2017, somewhere in maybe March of 2017, we, we sat the whole team down together and we kind of mapped out, we went around the room and everybody said what marathon they kind of wanted to run. Oh, okay. And then we tried to see if we could like group people together. Collapse that, yeah. Yeah, so that we could get people on board. And initially, um, Scott and Scott and I were not all, you know, I'm wanting, for... we didn't, we, we didn't, uh, our first choice wasn't necessarily Frankfurt, Frankfurt right. but, um, when we when we talked it out uh, amongst the three of us and and again with the whole team yeah um it just really made sense uh to have three three guys who have now all run 212 yeah um training together versus one guy running one race right one week and then two weeks later somebody else racing and then two weeks later somebody else sure and sure so we decided that uh, it would be in our best interest to try to collaborate collapse yeah. that and collaborate versus being being spread out over yeah. a month or two. Right. Um, and so that's kind of what we're hoping to do again sometime, cool. sometime this spring or this summer, probably in the next month, maybe. Yeah. Um, and just try and figure out what everybody wants to do. Cool. And then see if we can, if we can kind of line people up. Yeah. Cause I think that that's a, you know, that's one of the big tenets of our group is the power of the group. Of course. And so, um, if we can have two or three or four guys training for the same marathon again, versus everyone training, individually for different ones then uh i think it would behoove us to do that yeah and so um that's a really long-winded answer to say <laughs> no i'm not going to say yet which one i'm leaning towards I, I liked the answer though yeah it's well thought out yeah well i'm sure i would imagine that a faster time is on your mind and, and probably the rest of your teammates so um I'll be looking at uh at the faster races this fall to try to try to figure out what you'll be running but <laughs> Come 2020, uh, that's not so much the case. The the trials being in Atlanta, um, that will not probably be a, a PR scenario. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe, but um, certainly a much more challenging course. Uh, do you have, I would imagine that some of what you're doing this spring, um, getting back into kind of like racing mode is, is partly uh, motivated by the 2020 trials. Mm -hmm. um, so will, will you try to... Assuming you you go away and, and go for the PR this fall uh, on a on a faster course, uh, do you then kind of come back to, to what you're doing now and try to get back into that mentality of um, 
yeah, reminding yourself how to compete, reminding yourself how to race. Um, yeah, I think I think that we'll we'll learn a lot from this year. By the end of the year, um, when we once I've run a marathon and, mm -hmm. and we kind of see how that goes, and and when we reflect back on just the entirety of the year and and see if what we did was successful. Sure. Um, I certainly I will say now I I do think that for sure it's it's making a difference what I'm doing now and just again like you said trying to race more yeah um trying to think about time less um and but it never hurts if if you could PR in Atlanta at the trials like yeah. it, that's <laughs> always a good place thing. to do it <laughs> be, yeah it'd be a good place to to show up and perform um but yeah I mean I think there are a couple different scenarios that we've kind of talked out and there's there's kind of a plan a plan b plan c and it it really just depends on how the rest of the year goes and and what we think it's all about what what will set me up best for 2020 sure. for success in 2020 yeah. so um whatever we feel is going to give me the best opportunity to make the team is what we're going to do and yeah. so we haven't 100 percent decided yet if that's going to be a uh, spring marathon, fall marathon next year, or skip a spring marathon again and do this shorter, faster stuff. Right. And, uh, we really haven't decided. I have a, a lot of different thoughts running through my head, um, a lot of different scenarios that could pan out, and there's still so many different races that I want to do. Yeah, of course. Um, and so that's all going to come into play, but ultimately it's going to be uh, we're going to sit down and, and kind of work backwards from the trials sure. um, and try and see what'll set me up really well yeah for that and it's just hard to say because it's it's kind of point. far out but it's also kind of really soon <laughs> right so it's it's hard to say exactly what that's going to look like yeah um again because there could just be a couple different scenarios that could come into play sure sure yeah that makes yeah. that makes sense um well we'll hope that uh you continue to progress and yeah and things uh continue to build for for the trials that'll be an exciting one yeah i'm i'm already looking forward to it i think atlanta is a great city i think it was a good choice um and so i'm i'm excited to get out there hopefully maybe and th that's another thing actually that could come into play is i might go and race in atlanta to try to just get more familiar with the city and maybe run the course sure um if once they release it or yeah i think yeah. i know somebody actually who helped design design the course oh, no the course. so nice. i think he could help me yeah, uh, yeah totally maybe give me some advance information sure on, on where the course is going to go but hurts. um yeah that's kind of that's kind of the plan right now and um i'm just i'm excited for the trials already which is it's and i've it's had people sign. say it's like it's still so far away but it's really not yeah like for yeah. for an elite who's or for just a professional who's who's cycles like revolve around olympic trials and olympic, exactly and olympic races um or olympic years uh it's not that far away no i mean it just feels yeah. like the 2016 trials happened it does and that was two years ago yeah so you're halfway to the next yeah, one we're inside two years for, yeah for 2020 right. so um it's it's approaching quickly yeah 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 um good well we'll look forward to seeing your uh progress and um We'll catch you next time. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. Thanks. Alrighty. Cute jazz music. Yeah. <laughs>